At a time, am I audible? Yes, sir. At a time when a tiny invisible virus is challenging centuries of human history, decades of development technologically, especially in terms of vaccines, changing its form based on the community or the country where it is infecting people, demonstrating, despite being so small, how resilient it is, I believe resilience is the idea worth spreading using the TEDx platform. A very good morning, IIT Goneshwar. Around February 2020, I landed in Imphal Airport. When I was walking into the terminal, I saw a few people standing there using IR thermometers measuring the temperatures of the travelers coming in. I thought maybe it's some uh, special you know, initiative in an Northeast airport or something is going on. But without paying much attention, I moved on. I was there in Infog to get a very first order from a government department for a newborn blanket that we have developed to prevent hypothermia in small children at birth. I went into the official's office after a couple of hours of delay. I hear some things like there is some virus, a possibility of closing the borders, isolating the state, what not. Given the severity of the situation, I had to take my return flight without getting the order in hand. Within no time, the things started getting worse and we get into lockdown. When this happened, we were all set for an investment round into our company, scaling up a product that we really thought as part of our mission to support a million premature babies with that product. Things started real into the downward spiral, nothing was happening. Around that time, we also started hearing from friends and collaborators that as an effect of this virus spreading, people will start losing livelihoods, employment will be a major challenge, so many things were going on. The kind of shock that we had to face, things were looking really bad. We thought, okay, let's fine, we'll, we'll take a small break and do things that we wanted to do and maybe within a couple of weeks or a month, things will be normal, we'll resume what we wanted to do. But it was not the case. Being problem solvers by nature, we looked at the challenges in the country, we realized the doctors are not getting the masks and people are suffering, but we never used any, manufactured any masks ourselves, but then used them for protection. Quickly did a cycle of learning and then we realized the packaging material that we are using for our uh, blanket that we were making for the newborn babies, that material can be repurposed and we can actually make a filter which is as good as an N95 mask. Now we kind of started our journey, lot of challenges, some of you might have faced, you can't move, you can't travel, and so many challenges, but still we pursued and it all went ahead. We made a significant impact by creating 200,000 hours of employment Around 500 women were trained across the country and lakhs of masks were provided not just in India but in different countries. This is a story of resilience that I have been witness and part of in a recent past. May I request you all to raise your hands if you agree for the following question. Resilience is a leadership skill. Okay, I see a mixed response from the audience. Resilient people are always winners. 
I see a lot of skepticism. Resilient people are always winners. Okay. We'll revisit these questions after I share my life story and then let's see if I can change uh, opinion or some of you who were on the border will make a choice at that time. The story that I was talking about, sitting in some corner of Hyderabad, what we made through this billion social mass initiative spread across 16 states in the country. Including a place in the state Odisha, very close to Bhuvaneshwar, a place called Kalinganagar, where these artisans have made, trained themselves, upskilled and contributed. They did not stay back and complain that there are no jobs. They rose up to the occasion and then contributed not only for the fulfillment of their own personal needs, but served the entire country. Around the time when I received an invitation from IIT Bhuvaneshwar for this TEDx talk, I was having a conversation with my co-founder Dr. Rajay Karapur. Satya, the mass project is over and uh, we are still not back to pre-pandemic situations. Looks like condition is bleak. And given the kind of challenges, we were talking about five years down the line, supporting so many lakhs of babies, so many adolescent girls. How are you even able to think? How does your brain function? I said, honestly, Ajay, I am not sure. Let me think about and come back to you. A boy from a small town, Vijayawada in Andhra Pradesh, I sold Rakhis, greeting cards and fireworks for Diwali on footpath while I was going to school. I studied my 9th and standard in a municipal corporation high school with broken roofs really, if it rains, we'll get wet in the classroom. On a hot day, because it is too hot, the teachers used to take classes under the trees in our school ground. From there, through Andhra University, IIT Bombay, University of Central Florida in Orlando, Florida, I reached one of the premium national laboratories in the United States of America. What I was doing there, day in and day out, I had the opportunity to work on some of the top-notch instruments that one can only think about. I was operating them day in and day out, collaborating with professors from some of the premier institutions that you can think about, work with industry who are solving problems anywhere from treating cancer to making semiconductor device and also making a better aircraft engine. Some tools that I was operating at that day to solve these problems of significance through fundamental science were only operated by a handful of people around that time. 2010, I got married. Suhasini, Dr. Suhasini and I returned to the United States. I continued my job. It was more of an extended honeymoon for my life. One day in February 2020, I get a call from my younger brother. He tells me, by the time you come back to India, I'm not sure if you see our father alive. We took a flight, came to Vijayawada. Fortunately, my father recovered and he survived. So Asini and I returned to New Year's only to decide that we do not want to be in this situation one more time in our life. If returning to India was inevitable, Having spent almost a decade in utilizing science and technology at a very fundamental level, as I explained, I was looking at atoms, evaporating them, studying them at a very, very fundamental level. But when I come to India, I really felt I must be doing and utilizing the science and technology and the tools around to solve India's problems sitting in India, but not working for an MNC which is trying to solve
solve the problems of a developed world. With that spirit, I took an assignment, started helping MSMEs to large corporations in this country. I went for a establishing collaborations from some of the European nations. On my way back, I landed in Mumbai. I see a text message on my mobile. My CEO of that company wanted to meet me at the airport itself. I said maybe something very exciting happened, new project, very exciting. Along with my colleague on that trip, we both go meet him outside the Mumbai airport. Only to realize the Indian operations of our company are being closed effective two weeks from that day. The vision with which I came to India was unfulfilled. I was already blessed with baby girl, Vajra, who was two years old at that time. We were expecting a second baby in a few months from that day. There was a choice to go back to America and then do what I was doing earlier and enjoying as a job. Or continue pursuing the vision for which I have taken the chance and returned to India. I stick to the later option, deliberated and eventually with support of friends and family, created by Shodhana Technologies. Over the last five years at Parishodhana Technologies, we have been able to positively impact so many lives, starting with around 300 newborn babies, around a few hundred female adolescents, many of them suffer through cramps during their menstruation, a few thousand hours of warmth to soldiers who are trying to protect the nation from the eastern or northern side of India in Siachen and other high altitudes. Despite doing so many of these things in terms of a positive impact, commercially we are way behind where we are supposed to be thanks to the challenge of pandemic and other associated aspects. This entire story and what happened in my life I revisited recently and I started asking some questions to myself. Then I realized and I called back my co-founder and told him, hey Ajay, you said what they have wrong with me or right with me in my life. I said, not one, I have three apps in my life. That is, my family, friends and faith. All these three are allowing me, are empowering me to do what I am doing today. Let's start with faith. Faith is beyond religion. The faith that I have, that I am trained in, and I inherited from my family is as long as you keep doing the right things without deliberately hurting others, right things will eventually happen. Where did I get this from? Primarily from my family. One day when all this startup journey and the way things have been up and down in my life, I was having a conversation with my father. I told him, from you I learned how many ways, how many different ways one can fail in the life despite doing all the right things. As a small child I have seen him, startup was not even a term at that time when I was a kid going to school. But to take care of his family, he has developed so many products at home, sold, everything was going fantastic, life goes on. Around some time, some unknown unknown hits the business, boom, there's nothing. What fed the entire family until the previous day is zero there. If I go back and look at that today, I do not know what was wrong with what my father was doing or the family was doing. Things did not happen. My father always emphasized, I realize now, he always said you better get educated well, formal education is very critical, you should do. Maybe he felt it is the lack of that exposure to infrastructure and training that did not allow him to scale the businesses that he has created. If he was able to do, he was a COPD patient as you see, he was on oxygen support for around 15 years. If he was able to do what he has done, I believe it is primarily because his wife and my mother stood like rock solid behind him. 
Let me take this opportunity to go ahead to them. Because it is them who gave me everything if I am standing here today, despite all the challenges, instead of doing something on a platform or a footpath, I am standing at a premier institution like I to go next or on this platform and talking to you. It is what they have taught me. They taught me accept life as it is. What I have learned from them, what you see as a failure is more of a change of course in life. By the way, because you are all students, when you fail in a subject tomorrow, don't tell me it's a change of course. Your faculty will you change the course and do something else. Please don't do that. I'm talking about failures, significant failures when they happen in your life. They taught me it is more of a change of course in life. And start doing it. My parents are a bit of resilience to me. My father is a real karma yogi that I have seen. When you say somebody karma yogi, keep doing your work without getting attached to the result. You can expect, you want to be rich, you want to be successful, you can have all the desires. That's what drives you to do the work that you do, but if things do not go your way, there's no point getting disheartened. Even if you do, it should be momentary and you should continue doing what you want to do. And then, a lady who was extremely aspirational, wanted to do something in her life, wanted to be recognized as a dental surgeon. I got married to her, Dr. Suhasini, because I was going to the United States, she left everything and came with me to the America. For my family priorities, I shifted to Pune. She returned to Pune with me. That company closed. I started a company of my own because that's a vision and mission I want to pursue. She continues with me. Many things that we don't agree with each other in life. But it is a pure love that drives me what I am doing today. Not just this Satyanarayana. Ask the Satyanarayana sitting there if he is married or Mr. Narayana Murthy or Dr. Karan Mahindarsha. Talk to any of these successful entrepreneurs. It is the 100% support of their life partner that helps them do what they want to do. As people say, the toughest thing in life is to be a spouse to an entrepreneur. Often, this journey will only give you a delayed gratification. So, I thank my wife for standing with me through all the ups and downs and I'm extremely grateful to what she has been doing. As a student at Andhra University Engineering College, maybe in your age, one evening we were sitting and having a conversation after the evening tea. Like you all do, we were pulling each other's legs. Around that time, a friend of mine, one of my classmates, he makes a statement, you know guys, you do whatever you want to do in your life. You have all the freedom to do. But with me, I really need to be very careful watchful in each step I take. Some time ago, a person who came out of my village, village name is Durgada Gate, it's in the East Godavari of Andhra Pradesh. He says he went and we did something and after that nobody went out for studies from our village. And my parents took a chance and sent me here and I better be responsible to do in everything that I do so that the people after me, the younger ones after me, will get the opportunity to come out of the village, get educated, prosper in their life. 25 years down the line, I recently had a chat with him. He says there are around 1,000 kids who go to school. Over the last 25 years, so many people in that village pursued higher education, settled well in their life. This one individual's responsibility opened the gates in this Durgada Gate village for the prosperity. If you ask today, I don't know if my friend Vir Babu will even remember that he made this statement. I'll tell you something beautiful. Resilience is not a badge that you wear and keep flashing all around. A resilience is a quality like that invisible thread that makes a garland with different flowers. And people like Mr. Vir Babu, who is currently a manager in Vijay Steel Plant, I'm specifically taking this name because this is the true story that happened in my life. That one person's responsibility 
made him so resilient in his life he kept pursuing higher and higher goals which changed the life of an entire village you see it is such a responsibility that you get it when you have resilience ingrained in your system training as i said my father always emphasized you must get educated be trained well to face a situation in more formal situation with a lot of excitement i went to university of central florida for my phd the people here in material science and metallurgy will realize i had an opportunity to train on a high vacuum transmission electron microscope system i was very excited these are operated at a really really high vacuums and uh, you can so that see uh, atomic structure in materials and we could solve a lot of problems using that tool i did fantastic in my training and the professor who was supposed to authorize me came to take my examination how did i do in training he asked me a question satya how many times you failed while training when he says failing he is spoiling the vacuum in that system i was so proud i said not even once this professor says i am sorry i cannot authorize you and he walks away i'm like so i run behind him go to his office and ask the professor what happened he said come have a seat see you are operating this high vacuum machine and let's say i authorize you to operate then somebody authorizes you you can operate alone middle of the night weekend wherever you are you can do it imagine you are operating this machine and it fails you need to fix it in a very short span to make sure that the machine is not fully damaged if you did not fail during your training you do not know how to fix if a problem occurs even accidentally <coughs> so my friends it is extremely critical to allow ourselves to fail not because we want to fail it is because those failures help you train yourself to handle adversity in your life so we must emphasize one more time to be resilient is not to endure the failures or to endure the pain it is about finding ways to maneuver ourselves and take it as a change of course and keep rising and rising again i explain this to my friend and let me reemphasize again from sambar powder to seeing the atoms to saving the lives today if i was able to go through this journey it is because these three years supported me to do what i have done let us revisit those questions resilience is a leadership skill it is a leadership skill not because resilience makes you leaders it is a life skill which every leader must possess because you are resilient you are a natural leader <coughs> resilience resilient people are always contented so do you now agree that resilient people are always the winners we are winners not because we won a trophy or we are successful or we made millions or billions of dollars we are winners because we are contented with our efforts we are happy with what we are able to contribute through our lives the contentment in my father's life came because even if he did not have a lot of financial assets he gave five people to this world me and four of my siblings all five of us are touching lives positively at different levels within our capacity before he passed away 14 days he did not even consume water even at that time he told me you should try creating a company which will create employment for 500 people he was about to die he has nothing to do with it but still that desire or a vision to impact lives positively is what drives me on that note i call upon you all 
my experiences and training, my education, my companies are personal to me. But majority of us are blessed with family and friends that we can look up to. Please go back and look at these stories which are very really personal to you. Look at those stories that can inspire you when you are in a challenging environment. And I am very sure once we all become resilient individuals, we will have resilient marriages, resilient families, resilient societies. It will be bliss all around. Before I leave this podium, let me tell you once again. Resilience is not a badge that you flash around. Resilience is that invisible string which keeps the flowers together in the form of a garland. All your other qualities and strength, everything will fall apart. They will not be a beautiful garland as long as one is not resilient. So my friends, thank you for the opportunity. Wishing you all a great future. I take your leave. Namaskar.